Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. I have a simple question, simple answers. These are probably simple experiments, but they're interesting. And so I thought I'd film uh, me and Richard. Hi, Richard. Hey, Russ. <laughs> Richard's here hanging out with me. And I'm going to do this simple experiment. Okay, I'm going to take one of these coils and I'm going to connect the outside as a short, the inside to a battery, do charge and discharge curves and calculations and areas under the curve. And, and just just see if the coil is on the inside or the outside does it create a different effect is it more or less power does the outside induction create a difference and we're just gonna we're just gonna do some simple tests and so i thought i'd film them because i'm doing them so let's get started So when we're doing these tests, um, we're going to use this coil here. This coil has the exact same amount of wire on the inside as it does on the outside. There's actually three coils. The outside only has uh, about 2,500 turns. The inner two, um, I forgot the turn count, but they're quite high. Um, the inside has one has more turn counts than the outside one, but these two are equal lengths of wire. So coil one, then coil two on top of it, equal lengths of wire. The inside has more turns, the outside has less turns. So just to let you know how the coil's configured during these tests. So coil one in our tests is the inside, coil two is the outside, coil three technically is just disconnected and open. All right, so with the coil on the outside open and us charging up the primary or the inside coil in this case, coil one, so coil one is the current on the blue, coil two is the current on the green. The green's, the coil's open so there's no current there. And then yellow is the voltage on the battery. Um, just something to note, these probes get offset when they get hit with a high voltage through the wire. Even though they're not being hit, it did offset it here. We're only measuring between the cursors. So the area, the rise time, it's only measured between the curses, cursors. The dotted blue lines is the rise time at 90 and 10 percent, okay? And the area here is the um, milliamps per second. So we're only calculating between the two cursors of the area under the curve for just the charge time here. And then that also depicts where the rise time comes into play. Um, so that's that's what we're measuring. Um, so I'm resetting the probe every single time to go to zero because we're not measuring anything over here because of this offset. It's just part of how these probes are. They're a little finicky, but they're also really um, precise and delicate. So let's now short the green coil and determine whether or not we have a longer rise time or a shorter rise time and go from there. All right, so now I've got the coil shorted and I'm going to show you the second coil. I'm just going to show you what it looks like here when we actually do it. So, now we'll talk about it. So, got it zoomed in here and got our uh, cursors. So the cursors are linked together. Um, and so it's always about 400 milliseconds is my measurement. I'm, I'm going to keep that consistent through all the experiments. So you can see, um, you can see what happened here. So we got a rise time of 118 milliseconds a uh, area under the curve of 4.313 milliamp seconds and um, you can see now the current on the green probe has adjusted itself according to the induced current and don't forget this is a shorted coil um, you can see what the end result here is both these probes might be a little offset over here after this spike so you know we just have to take that measurement with what we see right now so maybe I can measure uh, the green probe here and do some area calculations and maybe that'll help us determine some other information. So let me set that up. All right, so here we got the area for the green. Again, only between the cursors. It's about uh, 174.5 microamp seconds negative because it's in the opposite direction. So something to note here is the way the probes are set up, um, the induced current is in the opposite direction as the applied current. So everything going up is a positive current, everything going down is a negative current. So that's why this one's reading negative. 
Uh, so part of the experiment was to find out how the induced currents and directions go. Um, and you can see, right, this full current potential, it, it flatlines here. And then when we release it, you can see this really big induced current going in the same direction as the applied originally was. But since it's in the reverse direction, right, it's collapsing, um, it's going now inducing in the other direction. So kind of interesting. Regular stuff here, but setting up the experiment and doing it is always important. All right, well, I've got this shot pulled up, and I'm not sure how accurate this is. However, I moved the cur cursors over here to measure this area under the curve, and it's about uh, 625.2 microamp seconds. So, yeah, just a reference for you. All right, so I've switched the current probes around. I switched the coils around, so now I'm applying a charge to the outside coil, and the inside coil is, well, inside the other loops there. So the reaction uh, could possibly be completely different or the same. I would expect them to be different due to the fact that we are outside or inside of the uh, coil, which determines where the interaction happens. So let's go ahead and charge it up here. Okay. Now. So we got about uh, 90, uh, 89.34 milliseconds rise time and an area of 4.21. So that's uh, a slightly slower rise, or yeah, no, slightly faster rise time. Right. And uh, the current, so the rise time on the other one was 95.19, okay? And the, um, the current, the area under the curve was 4.29 and now it's 4.2 so pretty darn close um, the coils are pretty well exactly the same resistance but the outside coil has less turns on it um, so yeah let's uh, now short the coil and find out what happens next <laughs> dramatic music <laughs> okay I'm going to now do this again with the inside coil shorted So let's see what our result is here. So rise time, um, I'm going to save this before I forget, a rise time of 115, 15.2 milliseconds. The other one was 118.1 and we got about uh, 4.138 or four four point yeah four point one three eight so the other one was four point three one so slightly uh, less slightly less input slightly less on both of those voltage um, and then our green there the other one was I think it was one negative one seventy something and this one's negative one ninety three I didn't write it down I have to go look but there you go. Um, you can see this guy rung pretty good. It's a different reaction than last time. Last time it rung, but not, not quite like that. And I don't know how well this will measure, but we will try. So here it's about, um, save that, 571.1 microamp seconds, microamps per second, whichever way you say it. So I didn't write the other one down, but we'll reference it from the video. All right, now we've concluded those tests. So I'm going to take the tape off of the belt here. I'm going to set this in the same position every time I do a test. And the goal of the test is to find out how much the magnet induces into the outside coil if we use the inside coil as our drive coil. Um, now there's some very interesting tests that I need to either show you or you've already seen and I'll reference them if I've already posted them but the whole idea here is is if you apply a certain amount of voltage to this coil the resistance of the batteries okay the resistance of these batteries will actually lock the rotor into a fixed RPM because it's inducing and um, it nullifies the applied and it's literally locked into the little bit of forward um, motion that happens whenever you have a directional current coming from a battery. 
So in these tests, um, you know, they're not going to be perfect, but they're going to show us how much the inside coil cancels the magnetic field of the magnet from inducing to the outside coil. And we're going to find out when we charge the outside coil, right, how much induction do we get from the inside coil from the magnet. So this coil um, has two, it actually has three windings. Two windings on it are identical. Okay, and that's the ones we're using, inner and outer. However, the inner has a lot more turns than the outer, but it's the same length of wire. All right, so we are going to charge coil number two. That's the outside one. And we are going to leave the number one coil open. So right now, what we're doing is, again, testing the magnet rotation inside there to determine how much induced current and voltage is going into the <clears throat> coil that's not connected to anything. So right now, the coil's open on the inside. We're going to charge the outside, and let's see what we get. Okay, so you could hear in the background the little thing running because we got the brushes on there still. So let's look at what we got real quick. Um, okay, so the green is doing nothing, right, because it's not, that coil is open, so there's no current change there. Um, you can ignore these measurements. We're not really using these right now because um, I don't have the cursors on. So the current is being used. Current going up is, is current going into the coil from the battery. The voltage is dropping. And then here something interesting happens. This is where the induction of the magnet into the coil is in the same direction as the applied. And the magnet accelerated here and then it starts to slow down here and eventually gets to a point where it actually is pretty well at steady state and then it kind of comes back to what I would call the normal charge curve here. But in this mode right here, you can see the negative current. It's actually in the same direction as the applied, but it's over what I'm applying, so it looks like a negative current. And the voltage shows the same thing. It's above the nominal battery voltage. Then you got your standard kind of charge, charge curve that looks funky because of the induction. And this little oscillation right here is the magnet. Okay, it's, It spins, and then it kind of oscillates to settle out. So you got a constant charge current here and a constant voltage drop there and then the disconnect so now we're going to short out the inside coil again we're applying a magnetic field to the outside coil with uh, our batteries and see how that affects our result so here we go we've shorted the inside coil and we're going to apply a voltage to the outside Let's see how that reacts So now you can see the uh, the different interaction there, completely a different interaction. Let's see if we can zoom in. I almost catch the whole thing there. <clears throat> so now we had a constant voltage drop, right? And the current is now being induced into the bottom coil, and eventually comes back up to zero once it reaches its past top dead center. So now what we're going to do is flip the coils and get a different result here. Um, I need to really measure the time it took to do this, so I'm going to redo these two tests and show you how long it took to get to a steady state, because in this instance it took a lot longer it looks like. The uh, closed coil is acting as a high resistance on the rotation of the magnet. So this one here took about 1.299 seconds uh, to come to a full half rotations. This isn't quite starting at top dead center. It's a little offset, so it rotates the same direction every time. But it took about 1.229, so that's the, you know, that's how much um, induction and repulsion that is happening in the interaction between the magnet and the shorted coil, and even the charging coil. So now we're going to do the test again with the coil open. So the time it took, um, this is a different shot. If it looks a little different, I had to redo this, but the time it took, time it took, the time it took, okay, to come from where it was positioned to a, what I'd call steady state, which this oscillation doesn't count because it's already at this position just rocking, took about 480 milliseconds. So 480 milliseconds um, to make it the rotation to align the magnet with the coil. So this is what it looks like. We are going to charge coil number two. Coil number one is open. Here we go. All right, now we're going to short. So now the coil number one is shorted. We're charging number two. 
All right, now we have connected in a way where we are charging coil number one, that's the inside, and coil number two is open. This is with the magnet spinning. Here we go. So, a pretty similar result. Um, go ahead and take a time based measurement, which is about 576 milliseconds or so. So now we are going to short number two. All right, here we go. Charge number one, short number two, magnet spinning. So there you go. Um, looks like I need to reset probe blue, but hey, there at least is a quick measurement. So now, okay, if we look, earlier the time it took was a lot more than what it took right then. It took about a second, 1.2 or something like that, and now it's only at 767. So it appears from this test that the magnetic field of the inner coil is canceling the induced magnetic field into the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up in voltage and try to completely nullify the effect of induction on the outside coil. And the only induction we're going to get would be the induction from the induced current from the coil and not the magnet. So we have to make the magnetic field stronger by boosting our voltage. Still at 281 volts. Let's go up and we'll double that. So I'm going to give you a visual again. So right now we are charging the inside coil and the outside coil is shorted. All right, now let's get the other way. All right, so now we are charging the inside coil. The outside coil is open. And this is at uh, 881 volts. Two, sorry, 281 volts. All right, so same test. We are going to be going up in voltage. So 570 volts input. Um, I'm going to adjust the current to 10 milliamps just so we have a little bit better visual here. May need to move them around. And basically, we are charging the inside and the outside is open. Spinning a magnet, here we go. So now, you can see the time is much, much faster. Mm, that, one's hard to, that one's hard to pick. It's probably somewhere right in here, but I'll, I'll pick that first peak, so about 420 milliseconds. We are charging number one, and number two is shorted magnet spinning, here we go. So now you can really see the the interaction. It definitely induced a lot less into the outside. Measure the time, which is about that one, 508 milliseconds. So now we're getting pretty close to just completely removing the outside coil from the equation by uh, creating a bigger magnetic field and nullifying the magnet permanent magnet's induction into the outside. All right, we are currently sitting at. 868 volts. So this is coil number two open, charge number one, magnet spinning. Here we go. Much faster. Much faster. So we'll call it this little hump again. So 310 milliseconds and much more torque. There is a uh, pretty good brass flywheel on there so it's torquing that flywheel around so let's short the outside one now and see what kind of induction we get charge number one short number two 868 volts here we go so it looks like uh, 420 482 milliseconds and there's what the curves looks like. So I'd like to get a quick comparison between um, the magnet spinning and not spinning at the 868 volts here. So the magnet is stationary, it will not be spinning, 
we're going to be basically just seeing what our charge here on the induced, so on the green one. <clears throat> I'll need to turn the cursors on, but let's get a capture first. So this is with the uh, the coil shorted, by the way. Number two shorted, charging number one. So now what we're going to do is let the magnet spin and kind of see the the difference here of how much current is induced, and then we can determine how much was induced from the coil versus how much in is induced from the magnet. All right, here we go. My wife says this looks like a whale. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the overlapping of last charge time with no magnet spinning versus what it looks like with the magnet spinning. So the green and the blue are peeking out of the white. So the white traces, this bottom one is the original current on the green, and the this one is on there, and same thing with the yellow. So you can see they're pretty darn consistent except here, which is where the magnetic field is induced, right? So here, there's no magnet spinning and it pretty well comes back out in flat lines um, because there's no current going on in there because it's only when a changing magnetic field is happening. But this magnet is rotating, right? So what you see is, you know, obviously the magnet inducing right into the outside coil, which is what this measurement is on the shorted coil number two. So anyway, just want to show you the overlap. It gives you an idea of what the difference is between one and the other.